everyone, welcome back to Kaiserreich. It's crazy. Who would have thought? Another video? The day after the one the last one just came out? What the hell? Anyways, uh, welcome back. The illegal strike in Sydney? Factories work in Sydney walked off the job today, organizing an illegal strike that prompted swift police reaction. While the workers insisted that they were not associated with the ACTU and their actions were born from frustration, they were quickly issued an ultimatum to disperse, which they ignored. Violence quickly escalated when the police moved in, and the uh, resulting riot ending with over 30 badly injured. Within a week, factory workers were back on the job, now supervised by private militia soldiers to ensure no further demonstrations. Okay, now I don't believe there's going to be a coup. I, I know for sure there's no civil war, at least they're not like, you know, actually like, on the map. I, I do find the Civil War kind of mechanics where it's just like the demilitarized zones. I think those could be kind of interesting. Like obviously when um, in the Ukraine update, they had something similar to that. I think that's quite neat. I think more um, more Civil War should actually kind of be based on that in uh, Kaiserreich. Unless, unless, assuming it's not like a massive war, like obviously like Spain, I don't think it'll work as well. Anyway, so what's it? Oh, yeah, okay, we don't, need to, we don't need to worry about any of this. We don't care about that's just the generic events, okay? What do we want to do? Cheaper weapons, negative 30% consumer goods for uh, 180 days. I mean, that's research speed. It, it's a false. Don't ever, don't worry about research speed too much here. Give me, give me you. Absolutely. Give me the negative 30%. That, that's quite a bit. Okay, British uh, delegation. So I think everybody is just choosing what bonuses they want. You know, it's good for them. Having bad like, bonuses is nice, for sure. Um... I don't care about it, but <laughs> they, they can have them. They can have them. And the one thing, too, when we do have 182 political power, I should be spending that on something here. Can't take any of you. What do we have? What do we have? 5% factory. Okay, so you're, you're not bad. You're okay. You're pretty good. I mean, negative 10% and a 5% stability boost, I, wouldn't, I would not say no to. I think you could be good as well. You're kind of garbage. You're, you're interesting, because you are going to save us political power in the long run, right? Because you save um, 33%, which means that these guys are each going to cost 100. That saves us 100 political power right there. And as soon as we at least get one more law, civilian economy, more recruitment, you've already paid for yourself. So you do pay for yourself eventually. You're not going to pay for yourself right now, unfortunately. But you will pay off eventually. Uh, by, by the time the Vill Creek happens, you'll, you'll have paid for yourself. Like Agent City voting for the bailout. You should vote for the Hong Kong Society because it allows me to maybe get Hong Kong back. Now, what are we going to do with Hong Kong? I think absolutely fucking nothing. I, don't, I, don't, I think it's basically worthless. Also, turn off Fog of War. I mean, he's got 1.15 million manpower. We get 2%? We get 0.02% of that. Which, I mean, it would double... It actually like almost triple the amount of uh, non-core population. But aside from that, I mean, you have no natural resources. You might have like a factory or two, which could be okay. That's really that's really about it. You might have a factory, which I mean I wouldn't say no to. If you want to give me a free factory, I wouldn't I wouldn't say no. But I think that's really the only possible benefit we could possibly see from that. Okay. Council's been expanded. We want to go for immediately to a national university. What do you need? You need to set research to radio. Okay, you know what? Fair enough. Okay, so let's pass for Szechuan. Kind of political power. Trade in the Commonwealth or trade outside of the Commonwealth. Seek new markets. Well, who would the new markets be? They'd be either be like Germany, Japan, and that's really about it. Like, you're not going to trade with the United States. They're going to collapse very, very soon. Japan is a hostile government. At some point, they might declare war on us. It's really just Germany, right? Like, I'm trying to think, like, who else would even be in the running for somebody who would help us out in that regard? And I, I can't think of anybody. Like, it's Germany, maybe the Qing, but I I can't see that happening too much. I mean, I guess maybe Russia as well? Because, I mean, the Entente and the Russians, we don't have any actual hostility between us. I don't think there's even a, a reason we would ever go to war with each other. 
medical experts, you're... I mean, you'd be okay, like, during war, but not right now. Where's my, um, there you are. Stanley! Stanley Armor, get the, get your ass in here. Give me that 10% stability, um, 5% stability in the 10% consumer goods. Because what are we at right now? 15%. Not bad, especially since we are taking a, um, we're still in the civilian economy. Like, it's a, it's a good number to be at. Okay, so there is our bonus research slot. And do we need all of these? Yes. I mean, we could also do Democratic Australia. We do have this now. Yes, let us lift martial law. Seems like a nice thing for us to get done. And with our extra research slot... Do I actually want to wait until 37 to use this 100% research bonus? 91 days. I mean, we don't really... Ex I don't think we extract too much, right? I mean, a decent tungsten. That's Okay. You're all 38. I mean, the 36 artillery, it's always cheap to get. I will not say no to it. Lang speech disrupted. Jack Lang gave a fiery speech today in Sydney, in which he uh, rallied against the cynicalism and radicals which have plagued the labor movement. He did not get far into the speech, however, when it was disrupted by cynicalist supporters chanting traitor and sellout. Lang was uh, first ignored by such taunts, but eventually joined in. Um, with every uh, counter insult he made uh, being followed by cheers and roars from his supporters. When discussions uh, discussing employment, Lang uh, had tur uh, <laughs> when dis uh, discussing employment, Lang had decided to eject the syndicalists after one remark. Didn't you and Beasley turn Australasian workers out of their jobs when you scabbed the party? Following this, a violent confrontation broke out between the syndicalists and labor supporters. The incident was uh, picked up by the Australasian media. And while their intent was to blame the radicals for the disruption, instead it is Lang who is seen by the public as the one who escalated the confrontation and edged on his supporters. Okay. That's going to give even more support for the cynicalist. Again, not that it really matters so much. Again, I don't, do we give a shit about Lang? No. We don't, we don't really worry about what the hell he's up to uh, at, at all. Okay, so it looks like the Kuomintang have lost in China. So the League of Southeast Provinces, who are you aligned with? You are pro-Germany. I, I don't know where that puts you in the... I mean, I know you're, you're anti-Japan. I guess you're probably pro-Qing. I mean, the Qing have gotten the German bailout. So I guess the Qing are also nominally pro-Germany as well. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take one... We'll wait for the next research slot. To, um, more speed. You know what? Give me more speed. Because we're going to be taking these heavy tanks. The the small armor penalty. Not great, but honestly, I don't think it's even that bad. Because, of course, you know, the tanks are going to be so heavy anyways. So it looks like Savikov has uh, taken control in Russia. I was going to say not a big surprise, but ever since the update, I feel like we haven't seen them win too, too often. Savikov usually gets kicked out one way or another. Shot, expelled, something like that. Yeah, okay, assist with our economy. I'm not even building anything because I'm a fucking dumbass. Build stuff here, here, and here. Our 14%. I mean, 14%'s okay. I'm not gonna say no. Hong Kong unrest moved over. It seems that the burgeoning unrest in Hong Kong against the received Shanghai centrism of the Legation Council has been suppressed by Shanghai. They have promised to prioritize equal fundings between Hong Kong and Shanghai, and have even gone so far as to cancel the railroad in Shanghai that started the trouble. The entire incident has probably served to eliminate any opportunity for renewed influence we might have exerted over Hong Kong. Oh, look, I didn't want political... Give me... Why do I lose political power? Just because the Legation Council was able to hold on to Hong Kong better than we were able to. Uh, give me a... Actually, what are we at right now? We're at 8 to 17. And we have plus 2 from trade. You know what? Give me an extra civilian factory for now. Flanders has joined the Pact. The Balloon Commune, led by James Jones, uh, <laughs> The guy from Spider-Man. He will probably end up getting invaded by Germany. Usually the Commune doesn't actually defend them. The Maori Act. What are you? How to political power? I mean, that, that's a free uh, minister. Let's get a free minister here. The VFL Finals. 
Extraordinary enthusiasm in the building for the Victorian Football League Grand Finals. With a large number of people having been uh, recorded attending the trainings for both the Collingwood Football Club and the South Melbourne Football Club. Despite the warm weather, the teams train strangely for the upcoming Premiership on Saturday at the Melbourne Cricket Grounds. Both sides are confident that they will take out the Grand Finals, but time will tell who will succeed. Well, I mean, I appreciate the 1% stability boost. You know, that that's nice. Germany's clear war on Wallonia. So it looks like the commie decided not to back them. Now, I do know... Hey, Collingwood, congratulations to you. Now, obviously, if, if France were to interject, Germany will automatically back down. That's just kind of what happens. Um, because the the mod doesn't want to start the, the Second Bill Creek too early. So that, that's a little fun fact. If you're playing Germany or you're playing France, you can always pressure Germany, and they will basically always back down. Yes, we'll join the ISAC. Like, what happens with Lonia, it'll happen with, um, with Switzerland. Basically, the game's kind of designed to... That Germany will always back down. In, unless it's... Because they don't want to start an early Ville Creek. It, it's in the game options. So unless you turn that specifically off, they usually back down. Or if you're Germany, you can always pressure the French, and they'll always back down as well. A little, little fun fact. little fun fact for you. Unless you've turned off that, uh option in which case I guess it doesn't do anything okay give me radio and then 10 days for you and then we'll get the 37 uh industry upgrades okay Jack Reeves been like the president you are which government are you Germany has gone Internal autocrat which I guess is not too surprising we haven't seen the AI be able to actually successfully defend democracy yet Will they ever be able to do so? Maybe. What's the difference between these two? Oh, you're you're slightly smaller. Okay. Well, give me those five uh, five units for now. I'm gonna switch you for heavy tanks, of course, because no, that the heavy tanks, please. Yeah, I know we don't have any t heavy tanks at the moment, but don't worry about that. We'll throw one of you up here. Cavalry, let's get two of you for the moment. Looks good. I mean, obviously, we're not going to have any manpower for quite a long time. For the obvious reason of, hey, there's not a lot of people in fucking Australasia, okay? Like, no, nobody lives here. Okay, so yeah, we want to go for you. 95 days, extremely fast. We love to see it. And the Spanish Civil War, do I want... I, I mean, probably do want to send some troops to Spain, right? Suddenly, I sent some units to uh, Carlos, Spain. But we can send one troop. Let's send over a cavalry division. I think that seems okay. We'll put in uh, a 5-2 general. Send you over. Also, somebody told me, yeah, they've, they've gotten rid of Balbo in Italy. Or for the, uh, for the ANI. Then we got Costanzo Ciano. Who I, I don't recognize that name, to be honest with you. Okay, freedom of the press. That's 100 political power. Who do I want to hire next? The great question. Where is my, um... I think I go with you. 90, look at that, 91 sensibility. We're getting 1.37 political power per day. These are wonderful numbers. I'm happy to see it. Infantry equipment, heart attack, and piercing. You know what? I mean, that that's, 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 that doesn't sound bad. I'm will I'm willing to take it. So who do we want to kill? If we, if we when our volunteers get to uh, Carlos Spain, where do we want to send them? Probably against CNT. Um, I, I if you've watched any series recently, you will have probably noticed that I feel like uh, CNT has been winning quite often. So if we can stop that from happening, I would consider that to be a success. Now we've got volunteers, of course, from uh, India, um, France, and the Canadians. You get volunteers from, of course, everybody in Germany, and you get volunteers from being the international. But we want to kill. I think we want to kill CNT first. Now I'm, I'm assuming Germany's probably gonna send some troops against the Carlist. I know, um, obviously, the game or the AI does not know it's in their actual best interest to kill CNT. 
and then worry about the Carlist uh, Kingdom of Spain divide afterwards? They don't know. How, how would the AI know? You'd have to, they don't know. But I know. Because I know we are going to target CNT first. Well, I say that, but I'm also looking at this and being like, my god, the, the Kingdom of Spain is looking pretty fucking weak right now. We can take Zaragoza. Because you're on high. You're on, I mean, everybody's on high, obviously. The war's still pretty early on. I'd like to take Zaragoza. You might end up taking Madrid. I mean, if you can kill the Kingdom of Spain fast enough that the Carlists are able to control a decent chunk of Spain, then I can see that working out for us. New labor campaigning. There's been a recent upswing in the Labour uh, Party's campaign efforts, as they appear to have a great deal more money in their party coffers than previously thought possible. Australasian police investigators suggest that the money is uh, likely being funneled through the Australasian Council of Trade Unions sent by the Union of Britain as an effort to support radicals within the Labour Party, though there is no real evidence of that yet. So we're going to get, we're going to hate the British a little bit more. We're going to lose more stability. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Fuck you, England. Also, I can't spend points on this right now. Who do we have here? Extra. Do we have any geniuses? No. Unfortunately not. Army drill, army defense, organization. 8%? I mean, it's okay. You know, give me the recovery rate. And that's going to gauze us to, you know, 23 uh, daily. Given enough time, we will be able to get a doctrine soon. And it looks like we have one Spanish division kind of helping us out here. I would like to take Zaragoza. It's a pretty major city here. As long as I don't get encircled, we should be okay. So what do I want to do? I do want to get rid of... Um, obviously, I want to get rid of um, the Depression. So next goes to go for Wealth of the Antipodes. Considering the Maori Act, the treatment of the native Maori people have been one of the sticking points in the administration of New Zealand under the Confederation and the New Zealand government has been pressing for, larger, uh, for the larger government for years now to pass an act incorporating the Treaty of Watangi into Australasian law, um, of which would guarantee the human and land rights of the Maori uh, to their uh, island, of which is not shared by the Aborigines anywhere else in Austra Australasia. Doing so would appease New Zealand, though it would not be appreciated elsewhere in Australia, uh, Australasia. But there are many in the government who suggest the unproductive Maori lands could be put to far better use under government control. Well, I think it would be nice to the Maori. So you are 75 political power into building slots. And then you are negative 50% uh, political power, but we get political power gain plus 0.1. That's 10 days... So that's 500 days of political power. So after 500 days, a year and a half, we start entering the positives for this. And then you need 750 days, which is about two and a half years. I mean, the building slots I, I couldn't give less of a shit about. So I guess we'll give them some land rights. We also get 5% population. And again, like I was saying, we have such a small population that getting even a 5% bonus would be nice for us. Okay, so you're still at high. What if I move to the coastline? Okay, socialists are in Norway. I have trapped myself like an idiot. <laughs> I have lost my unit. Well... They called me the smartest Australasian general there's ever been. Good work, team. Good work, me. Do I send another infantry in? Is that just stupid on my part? Do not research the 1940 heavy tank right now. It doesn't make any sense. Calling my genius. I mean, we have to take Madrid. That's good. I will send another division in. I am the world's biggest fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey, but that's one extra division that I don't need to supply. So when you put it in like that context, it almost doesn't seem that bad. Right? Right? Yeah, it's pretty okay. Okay, 
Chunking government's clear war. We've cut our volunteers back. So I send you back to Zaragoza. My, my, my plan was just to cut you in half. But I, I should have realized that like, I can't move too far ahead of the AI. It, it never works. Okay, we can hold a position here. I still would like to take Zaragoza. Now, I don't believe that the, um, the Reich's Pact is going to support Carlos Spain after the kingdom dies. I don't know. I think, I think they can. I was going to say, like, I'm, I was wondering if they even could due to... Um, you can't, obviously, you can't support two sides in the same civil war. But I think if your country you were originally supporting dies, then... I, I believe you can do stuff. Yeah, we're going to push back a little bit here. Thing is, I either push against you or I send you out and then try to push the Kingdom of Spain in some capacity. Thing is, I have, like no manpower. I can't even reinforce this cavalry division very well. So what do we do about that? The great question, I don't know. What do we need? Can we, do we have an aluminum factory somewhere? We do. I don't think that's worthwhile. And you know what? 10 steel? 10 steel is pretty good. I will take the 10 steel. Okay, France is fighting a colonial war. That's okay. Okay, it's the Wadi Empire. I'm assuming France has enough troops to deal with this situation on their own. I don't think I need to send troops down. They only have 15 divisions. That's kind of sad. But also, um, note, I don't want to declare war on the Wadi Empire for the very same reason I didn't want to declare war on, on Afghanistan. It's a stability loss for no reason. And having high stability is good. And I prefer not to lose it. So are you, you're for light tanks, right? No, this is for all armor. Be more speed and reliability. Boom, done. But I will say that at least right now, I think this would be a good time for us to end off this episode. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up. Not enjoy it, thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.